In this video, I will show you how to build the core infrastructure components inside Google Cloud Platform. This includes BBC network, subnets, and routes. And also, I will show you how to use the Compute Engine service to build virtual machines inside Google Cloud Platform. And we're going to use this to build a 40 gate firewall using Google Cloud Compute Engine. Let's get started. Once you log into Google Cloud Platform for the first time, you will see a list in the top for the project. This is a main requirement to build any resources inside Google Cloud. We have to be in a project. So as you see, I have my first project, which was automatically created. And I also created some custom project to build my resources into. As I choose here, the Google Cloud Platform Lab, this will open my specific project. Now it's also good to know that once you create an account for the first time, you have a generous offer of $300 that you can use to build different resources risk-free and test the services that they offer and make sure they meet your needs. So now we can close out of this and I wanna show you first the VBC network, which is in the list in here down in the network bar. Once you open VBC network, you will see a default VBC similar to AWS. This is a network container that contains subnets, route tables, and different network infrastructure components. In this case, it's very similar to AWS, but we have a main difference. Our VBC itself does not have any CIDR mask. It does not have any network assigned to it by itself. It does have subnets inside like AWS, but it does not have the whole subnet aggregation summary as a CIDR. So this is the main difference. And the second difference is that the VBC can actually span multiple regions. So as you see, this default VBC has one subnet in every single region they have all over the world. And we don't really need this much, but it's created by default under this default VBC. And it proves to us that VBC can spawn multiple regions and can provide a lot of potential for high availability and regional availability of your application. Now, because our VBC has all these subnets, let's check out the route table. And the impact on the route table is huge. As you see in Google Cloud route table, there is a route for every single subnet individually. Whereas in AWS, the whole VBC CIDR was a local route and there was no individual subnet routes inside. And this shows us the difference between the behavior of the subnets between the two cloud platforms and also it gives us a chance to create something different. The next difference between the route tables between Google Cloud and AWS is that there is no subnet association in the route table. It's just one route table that applies to everything and there is no way for you to create a different route table. Now let's try to create everything ourselves and remove this default VVC because we didn't need that many subnets and that many routes. I wanna go back to my default VBC and I just want to select this VBC and go inside and just delete VBC network. And now the VBC has been deleted. We can start on a fresh page and we can create our first VBC manually so we can select the network and the regions. And I want to call this Google Cloud Platform Public. And the reason I use the name public is because we have to create multiple VBCs to represent our public and private networks. Unlike AWS, we created only different subnets because we were able to create multiple route tables to segregate traffic using the 40 gate firewall. In the Google Cloud Platform, we have to create multiple VBCs to be able to really segregate traffic. So in this case, we have to have a VBC for our public. We can only create one subnet because there is no segregation anyway. Let's say this is our public one and we can choose a region that is more close to us. So I wanna choose East one. In this case, I can define whatever IP address range that I want, and I don't have to stick to the IP addresses defined in the automatic mode. So in this case, I want to use 10.10.0.0 slash 24 to be my public subnet inside the public VPC. And here we have a selection for private Google access if we want to access other Google services internally without having to traverse the internet. We don't have a need to do this right now, so we will explore this option later. And we can just click done. Now we have our subnet. 
So now we can go ahead and create our subnet and VBC. Now we have our first VBC for our public network created. The network is 10.10.0.0 slash 24 and our gateway for the subnet 10.10.0.1. Now let's create our second VBC network to represent our private network. And the private network is used to deploy our resources that we want to secure using a firewall and also control from being exposed directly to the internet like our virtual machines, our databases, our application servers and anything that we need to secure. For the private network, let's call it gcb-private and in the subnet creation, let's also create a private network and call it private1. Let's also put it in the same region to make sure the firewall will support both our subnets and both our VBCs. And finally, we need to define a unique IP address range for this network. So let's use 10.10.10.0 slash 23. So this network is bigger than the other network and it will help us support more virtual machines and more resources inside this region. And finally, with our one subnet, let's create our second private VBC. And now our second VBC has been created as well. So now let's check our new route table. As we see, we now have only two routes, so it's more cleaner. We see our network in this side. For our public VPC, we have a default route to the internet, which is fine for the public subnet. And for the local subnet, this is the local route. In the private network, there is also a local route. We also have a default route to the internet, but we don't want to expose our private subnet to the internet. So we're gonna come here and delete this route that is open by default. And we will create another default route to the firewall once we create it. Now we only have the default route in the public VBC. So we can move ahead to go into our compute engine. And compute engine is the service we use to build virtual machines inside Google Cloud. It's under the compute section. And once you open the compute engine for the first time, you might need to enable the API for it, which take a few minutes. But after that, you will get the VM instance and it's a very simple UI that you can create virtual machine with. So let's go ahead and click create. Once you can come in here, you can create your instance name. You can choose a different region to deploy your resource. So let's say we want to go back to US East one in South Carolina. We can also select the zone from here. So as we see, Google has three different data centers inside South Carolina that have ultra low latency in between these zones. We can choose any one. Then we get the choice between the virtual machine type. We have here machines from one CPU and half gigs of RAM up to 96 CPU and 360 gigs of RAM. And the best thing is we have $300 free trial. And also if you choose any machine size, it will show you the price hourly and monthly as well. So it kind of simplifies for you the billing, whereas in AWS, it only shows you the hourly rate. So in here is more convenient when it comes to pricing. And there is a lot of customizability when it comes to the generation and the machine type. So you can explore your option and choose which one that meets your need. But if you want to go in the economic side, you can select the first generation and choose the F1 micro. And this is a free one that you have 744 hours of use every month you can use this safely to create anything and it wouldn't even exceed your $300 free trial credits so in this case we cannot use the 40 gate on this machine type unfortunately because it's too small but if you want to deploy like a Linux virtual machine or anything of that sort you can use this option now in order for us to deploy a virtual machine we can select the operating system from here we have here the basic selection between the Linux distribution like Debian or Ubuntu, CentOS, whatever flavor of Linux you like. Or you can also choose Windows Server, which unfortunately does not work on the free trial. You have to activate billing. Even you can use the $300, but you have to activate billing to use Windows Server. So in this case, we do not have a 40 gate in here because this will be available in the marketplace. Very similar to AWS, you can go in the marketplace in here and choose any application you can think of. There's tons of pre-packaged application and virtual machines that you can use 
In the networking section, for example, we can see different firewalls from different manufacturing, like Palo Alto, Checkpoint, also from FortiGate as well, and Cisco. So in this case, I want to choose the FortiGate pay as you go option because this is the option that is on demand and we can pay for it by hour. We can come here and we can see all the information about our instance and we can see in here the pricing as well. And it breaks it very nicely for us, like for the virtual machine, for the software, for the hard disk, everything to get an estimation for the total cost and the total discount estimated. So this is very useful when it comes to long-term commitment and utilizing this tool to estimate your cost. So in this case, let's just launch our machine. For the deployment name, this is 48-PayAsYouGo1. You can change the deployment name if you want. Now for the zone, you can select directly a combination between the zone and the region in the same selection. So instead of just putting US East one alone and then the zone, in here you get to choose the zone and directly between the three zones in East one. So let's choose B for example. And in here is the machine size. This is going to be the lowest available. You see, you can bring the cores up and down as you need, and it will update the pricing estimation as you change it. But the smallest we can do is one CPU and four gigs of RAM. It's quite generous for small firewalls, but this is the lowest they allow in Google Cloud side. Now for the desk selection, in here we have our first desk, which is the boot desk. This contains the operating system. But don't worry, you're only paying for the used space on the desk, not the whole disk size that is empty. Now there is also additional disk for logs, very similar to any virtual machine that will contain a separate disk for logs. We can leave all this, we can actually select our image version from here. If you don't prefer to go with the newest version, you can actually change the version from here, which is very nice. AWS does not have this feature and it forces you to use the last one and then you have to do manual downgrade if you want. But the main important part is the networking section where we choose our interfaces. So I wanna use the same design I used in AWS where the main interface or the first interface port one will be the public. And if you come here and you don't see the sub network, you must be in the wrong region. So let's go back and change our zone from this one to US East one. And this way, if we go down, our subnet will appear. So now we have our main interface in public one. External IP is the IP that we have on the internet or the elastic IP equivalent. So we can have our external IP to manage the firewall. And then we will get the firewall rules, which are the security group equivalent on AWS. This will allow us to SSH to our firewall or HTTPS or even ports related to 40 manager use. So we can leave all these open, there is no issue with that, but we need to create a second network interface to be able to segregate our traffic. And it already selected our second VVC as this is the other option. And it also selected the only one subnet in there. We don't need public IP address on this subnet. In fact, the private subnet doesn't even have a route to the internet. So that will be a complete waste. We don't need anything else. We just need the second network interface. And now we can deploy our firewall. And this will start the deployment manager, which we can see has a multiple step or like a workflow to create this instance from creating the virtual machine, creating the additional disk, generating a password for the firewall and opening each port on the firewall separately using the Google API. So it's showing you every step in this process and very quickly it was able to already generate a public IP address and the user login to the firewall. We can try to open the URL for the public IP and then this will take us to our 40 gate login screen for the first time. We can then use the temporary password that was provided in here to quickly get access to the GUI. And then we change our password for the first use. And once we put our password again, we will be able to log into our Google Cloud on demand instance. We see our WAN IP in here and we see we are using version 6.4. Now let's check our network interfaces. In here we see our two interfaces, our public subnet and our private subnet. 
So now that our firewall has been created, let's go back to our VPC network so we can adjust our routes. And here we can just go into our VPC network routes. So in here we need to create another default route to point to our firewall in our private network. So we're gonna click create. So I wanna call this private default route. And for the VPC, we're gonna choose our private VPC. It's already selected. In here we're gonna add our destination IP range for the default route, which is 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0. And now we can change the next hub from the default internet gateway because this will allow us to go directly to the internet. We want to change it to an instance or an IP address. So let's choose an IP address and define the private interface for the firewall and the private subnet. So if we go back to our firewall under network interfaces, from here we can grab this IP address. This will be our gateway. And we can go ahead and specify this IP address as the next hub. And now we have our private default route inside our Google Cloud private route table. So now we have everything we need. So now let's go back to our virtual machine instance inside Compute Engine. We now see the 40 gate virtual machine is showing in the list along with the zone where the 40 gate was deployed and the internal IP address, the external IP address. And we are even able to SSH to the firewall directly using the browser. So this is similar to AWS Light Sail. We can connect directly to the virtual machine as long as it has a public IP address and is reachable from the internet. And this way it allowed me to log in directly to the 40 gate SSH without even having to put the password, which can be a double edge weapon, but it's also an option for quick troubleshooting and diagnostics. Also, if you go inside the virtual machine, you will be able to get information about your instance, like the instance ID, the CPU that is the virtual machine based on, and it's a very plain UI. I think it could get improvement from Google side to make it more intuitive and more creative. But for now, this is how it looks like. We get useful logs like the instance screenshot on AWS, which allow us to get direct serial port output from the device like the boot level process and the initial creation of the instance. Also, if we come back, we are able to stop or delete our instance from here. And that's how you build the core infrastructure components inside Google Cloud and also deploy 40 gate instance inside Compute Engine Service. Thank you for watching.